You know it's been a funny time for the art world when the most talked about piece of the year was a banana duct taped to a wall. In a strange sort of way, the absurdity of this overpriced piece of corner shop fruit kind of reflects the times that we live in today. As a man took a bite out of that $120,000 installation, the fine art world's self-gratifying bubble of pomp was burst and the entire world watched in unison as we realised just how goddamn dumb this whole shit show can be. The best art reflects upon the world that we live in and helps to show us the world that we'd like to live in. With that in mind, I'd like to take a look over 2019 and show you some of my highlight moments, artists, projects that have stood out to make this world a better place. My name's Doug, you're watching Fifth Wall TV. If you want to see more regular content, give us a follow over on Instagram at Fifth Wall TV. It's great. mind back to April 2019, a series of unfortunate incidents led to the large-scale destruction of Paris's beloved Notre Dame Cathedral. Tonight, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris is completely engulfed by fire. Within 24 hours, the restoration funds had already reached the tens of millions in donations. Yet simultaneously, on the other side of the globe, fires tore through the Amazon rainforest. The complexities of industrial scale destruction proved too laborious for many of those vocal and generous donors to untangle. And while the permanent scarification of a national landmark bears no, nothing can compare to the decimation of one of the natural world's most vital sources of life. I promise you this is still about art, just stick with me. Now in its second year, the Lithuanian artist Ernest Zakarovich's project Splash and Burn pulled our attention back to the devastating effects the palm oil industry is having on the Sumatra region of Indonesia. See, art connection, forest, deforestation, fire, fire, disaster. It's kind of in there. Maybe this is tenuous. For this year's incarnation, the Spanish artist Esif was invited to help reverse the effects of the palm oil trees by repopulating plantations with those natural to the region's environment. Environmental activism continues to be a vital arm of the art world, but there is a very big difference between effective engagement for change and virtue signaling. I'm not sure how convinced I am about giant spray painted murals of Greta Thunberg. I understand the idea, but I think in order for real effective engagement, you have to diversify this conversation. Change can only come from the core of the project, not just on the surface level. If the street art scene in particular wants to get serious about tackling issues like climate change, we have to have that honest conversation with ourselves about the effects that this little movement is having on the world. The countless air miles that are being racked up, the effects of spray paint on the environment. I'm fully aware that I'm as guilty as anyone else for doing this, but what I am saying is there is a conversation to be had, I would like to be part of it, and I'd like us as a collective to start thinking about the legacy that this moment in time will leave for future generations. The Italian artist Andreco started to show us that you can put your money where your mouth is. Back in February for India's Start Festival, the artist's mural was created with ink that was made from recycling air pollution. This shows a real positive step in this engagement engagement between art and activism. An interesting take on this conversation came from Klaus Lippmann's For Forest, during which he turned an entire stadium into an exhibition space for trees, commenting on how future generations might start to view nature in a completely different way. Effective engagement doesn't have to come from well-funded, sanctioned commissions. Earlier this year, Extinction Rebellion raised the alarm by floating a drowning house down the River Thames and San Francisco-based architect Ronald Rael united countries when he turned the US-Mexico border wall into a children's playground. It wouldn't be a fifth wall end of year wrap up video if I didn't at least once mention the Iranian brothers Icy and Salt, who earlier this year forced us to look at the US-Mexico border wall with completely new perspectives through a series of interventions. A personal highlight for me was spending some time with the brothers in a refugee camp in Greece filming their project, Giving Plants. <laughs> I mean, like I think a lot of people love plants, they're all gone. <laughs> 
Speaking of plants, the French artist Zoer finished off his 2019 by launching the visually stunning and climate aware project Solaris. Set in France's oldest scrapyard, 144 rusting vintage cars were turned into this stunning colorama. His fundraising initiative aims to buy enough hyper-cumulative plants that will absorb the cars, reduce the carbon footprint left behind, and eventually let one 80-year-old Frenchman finally retire. ...of trash. But then there is a time when there is this transition, when I start to paint a piece and it turns from trash to something that, where you can, you can even recognize some materials, but it becomes another thing, it becomes an animal. Another visually captivating project I saw this year came from the filmmaker Kyler Melton. When President Trump had shut down the government, he decided to assemble a Mexican and a US team to meet at the border and, well, to tightrope across it. I'm pretty sure that has no connection whatsoever to the street art community, but does it really matter? While we're on this subject though of adrenaline, nothing gets the blood pumping like watching Captain Ulf's Paradox. Marking 10 years of documenting Berlin's Pichasau and graffiti scene, the filmmaker dropped this FPV drone absolute whirlwind of a film. Muralism seems to be ticking along quite nicely in 2019. If I'm completely honest with you, as I always am, I am finding this relationship between advertising and gentrification... There. There. I am finding this relationship between advertising and gentrification increasingly problematic. That said, there are plenty of artists still consistently thinking critically about the impact that their work is having on an environment. I think Pat Perry's opening lines was one of this year's standout mural projects. American. With help from local school children, two murals were created in Slimani in Iraq and Bidford in Maine, USA as sort of pen pal messages to each other. Not only were both murals incredibly well executed, they came with a heartwarming wee message. It's also been a really impactful year for Brooklyn's Tatiana Fazlali Zadeh, who's been as fiercely active as she has at the grassroots level as she has been in the institutions. Between our ongoing project Stop Telling Women to Smile and our exhibition Oklahoma is Black, she's been breathing fresh air into a scene that vitally needs it. While on the topic of exhibitions, I couldn't do an end of year wrap up without at least giving a nod to Roger Gatzman's New York incarnation of Beyond the Streets. Without shadow of a doubt, Beyond the Streets became a curatorial benchmark for the culture. When I think about it, 2019 has been a really stellar year for exhibitions, especially here in the UK. From Anthony Gormley and Bridget Riley to Flem and Snick. And what I really love is when you can see both these different cultures kind of take and learn from each other in their own little ways. Fair play to you if you have made it this far in the video. I know I've missed out obvious choices in this list. I haven't even mentioned Banksy and he had a great year. Before I leave you for 2019, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to every single one of you that continues to support the Fifth Wall Project in whatever way that may be. I'm looking on to doing some bigger and bigger projects in 2020. I hope you'll join me then. Till next time, have a good new year. My name's Doug. This is Fifth Wall TV. What? <laughs>